Hi, friends. Welcome back to the Recover Your Life podcast. My name is Bridget, and today I am so excited to introduce you to my internet friend, but now hopefully real life friend, Eddie Koffeltz. Welcome to the show, Eddie. Bridget, you do the intro with the guest on the line, which is so brave. In my life, I could never do that. I could never do what you just did. You did such a good job. Hello. Oh, it, it, I've, I've realized that in just learning this, um, I do much better when I have a human present. And when I have to do it by myself, I freak out. Okay. We don't so, have to dive into this. This is your show. But there is something to the fact that you can do, only do it live. And yes. I <laughs> much f prefer to be alone, no one here, and just chatting to this amorphic nothing being, which I guess is just talking to myself, but you are awesome. Thank wow. you for having me on the show. Thank you for inviting me. This is very cool. Yes. So the Recover Your Life community is my desire. Is it to be a place where men and women um, have a safe place to grieve well, rest well, and love well? And it's even mm. calling it Recover Your Life is we all in our human experience have faced a season where we go, I don't know if I'm ever going to recover from this. Like I, there's just these places in our life. And so in my spare time, um, I like to attend trauma workshops. Oh, um, and so I did one recently and one of the teachers had introduced this quote by Dr. Peter Levine. And it says, um, trauma is not simply what happens to us, but what we hold inside of us in the absence of an empathetic witness. Oh, and so when we can actually come and be a hope filled um, safe witness to someone's story of pain, like we actually can provide hope and healing. And so that Eddie is why I have asked you on the show, because I have observed you as someone who is an incredibly kind, empathetic witness towards other people in their stories. Well, wow, that's very kind of you to say, what is that empathetic witness? What is that? The, you, I don't know if you saw my face, but you lost mm -hmm. me during that quote in a good way. Yeah. So like, so then the trauma happens, but you need that person to kind of come beside you and mm -hmm. not necessarily, does that mean like not necessarily like help, but just yeah. care about you in that place you find yourself? Yeah. So language that I've used before is, um, I use this language from what's called the connection codes is we learn to regard one another. So typically we want to rescue mm -hmm. people out of pain. So, you know, you might say, oh, you know, I'm struggling with some shame today and I want to go, oh, Eddie, you're awesome. Like, you don't need to feel shame, mm. but that actually dishonors your experience and it prevents mm. your body from being able to process that emotion. And so if we can show up and just say, hey, I see the shame or the pain or whatever it is you're carrying, it actually empowers our body's natural ability to process the pain um, and then not get stuck in a trauma mode. Isn't that incredible? Like just even just simply Man. saying, hey, I, I see you, I honor you. Um, does a really great job for our bodies. Man, our psychology is wild, isn't it? Like that shouldn't help. I know, <laughs> I know. But like we know inherently that it does. Like when you say it, it's like, yeah, no, that's right. It's like that, Um, what was the movie? Well, it's the whole idea of like sitting, pardon me if I say it wrong, like sitting Shiva or sitting Shiva, like mm -hmm. the idea of like a death happens, yeah. right? A funeral happens and then people just sit in yeah. the room and they're like, what do you do? I'm, I'm forgetting it's like big fat Greek wedding or some, there's some movie yeah, yeah. where even though that's Greek Orthodox family, whatever, right. but there's something about like, I don't know, we're just in the room and that helps. And then people bring over food, but we're just in the room. Mm -hmm. And like, why is that helpful? But it is, mm -hmm. that's a, the mystery of the human connection yeah. to me anyway. Yeah. So, so interesting. Thank you for saying nice things. So, yes, that yeah. is the way that I have. And I will talk a little bit more kind of how our stories got inter introduced to each other, but, um, mm. I've observed that from you, you know, through your work in organizations, um, committing to helping people find hope and healing in the middle of some really painful life circumstances, mm. whether that is, um, you know, efforts to end slavery or empowering people facing food insecurity, like, I have experienced you as a man who shows up for people and values people. And so mm -hmm. my first question for you is like, how the heck did that become part of your DNA? Was that just something that um, it was just kind of always part of you? Did you watch other family members and friends that really honored people well? Like how, how did you become passionate about helping people in heartache? Hmm. You know, that's a, it's a generous assessment of me. Mm. I don't have an actual answer okay. because I don't know that I would pin myself as that, wow. but I, but I understand what you're saying. I don't, I'm not trying to toss it no, away. I hear you. 
um, there's nothing in me that's like, I want to cultivate a spirit of this. But I, I, I will say like throughout my formative life, there have been many people along the way that have been that kind of kindness for me, or I have seen that kind of empathy yeah. in them. I mean, I remember like on an early like trip that I went on that was like a missions trip that's like the when healing hurts kind of trip. Like mm -hmm. it wasn't a helpful trip. <laughs> like it was <laughs> totally like 90s evangelical, whatever. Yeah, but I remember, painful. right? But I remember going and seeing like, uh, I distinctly remember a moment where, uh, like in my head at the time, we're going to like, basically it's like a poverty zoo almost like we're going mm -hmm. to build something and do a thing and then meet a bunch of people that need help and give them stuff and then leave. And I just distinctly remember the leader on the trip, just hanging out with the family mm -hmm. and it wasn't about us and them that it kind of like exploded the dichotomy of yeah. us and them in my head. And I, I feel like seeing those moments along the way and having people in my life who have been very warm and lovely to me, yeah. despite who I am, mm -hmm. has been like, basically, I want to try to copy them. And so I think a lot of times, anything that may appear as generous as you're saying, is actually me pushing pretty hard on my own ego, mm -hmm. going, here's what you want to be doing. Here's who you want to be. Don't pay attention to the fact that Sure, you're being lovely to this person, but also you are on a podcast. And so you are kind of making it about yourself, even though it's not about you. Right. But like mm -hmm. that fight, that that fight for yeah. ego is either something that I'm faking well or genuinely uh, engaged in. Mm -hmm. And most people wouldn't know the difference, but I think I know that <laughs> I know the difference. Yeah. So I can look back at times in my life and being like, that was a very ego faking moment where I mm -hmm. was pretending to be, you know, a man is generous as you painted me to be. And then there are other times where I'm like, okay, I really th actually think ego was in check, mm -hmm. but either way I'm doing impressions of other people who I've respected who are on their own journey. I think that's a complicated part of everybody's story, right? Yeah. Like it's the, um, how, like, like I wasn't planning on going here, but just kind of as we're processing, like how we can weaponize our giftings or our passions, but oh, also yeah. like, at the same breath, they also are part of our, like, I, oh, yeah. part of our DNA, like our soul DNA of like, but I show up in this place, right? You know, um, whether that's speaking or podcasting, or whatever it may be like, yes, there is a part of that where that is part of what we get to share with the world. And right. I 100% agree, I have to hold that too, where I go, okay, hey, like, for me, I, I want to hide in learning things. I love learning things. I'm learning things yeah. all the time. And there definitely are moments where I have this check in my heart that goes, are you learning things because um, this feels good and empowering and a, a safe choice? Or is this something because you feel scared and you want to hide behind something? Yeah. And so I think it's the both and in that. Yeah. Um, but I think I also just I want to honor um, yeah. I want to honor you in the gift that you have been to the world in this space, whether or not <laughs> whether or not right. you've seen it all. It's been really impactful in my own life. Thank you, Bridget. So That's very nice. I won't deflect. I will just say thank you. Thank you. Uh, so part of that, I would love to share the story of how we kind of got connected. So you have an incredible podcast that I would love to talk about in a few moments, but um, basically as part of your podcast and newsletter, you have a space where your listeners can ask questions. And so yes. I, I thought it was a good idea to ask a stranger on the internet. Um, <laughs> one of my big, deep questions, which was, um, last fall, I was in the middle of transitioning out of being a pastor full-time. I was yeah. on staff at an incredible church and I loved that job. And at the same time, there was something in me that said, what would it look like for me to honor God's self and others in a new way and in a new place? And so just through things that I have heard you share online, um, that was part of your story. And so I kind of wasn't thinking and just reached out and was like, how the heck do I do this? And, well, and to, oh, to, sorry to interrupt, but to your yeah. credit, you also did it through voicemail, which is a medium that I, I didn't did? You do it. Did you do it for the voicemail or email? Probably email. Okay. But, but either way, I almost, like my fault as a podcaster is checking yeah. any form of communication, including social media. And so mm -hmm. the fact that I was able to run across it made me yeah. very happy because uh, I, I have ghosted more people, more wonderful people in my life than I've gotten yeah. to engage with. So anyhow, thank you for emailing. Keep going. Sorry. 
Yes. And so that was just super important to me. Like I remember um, my, oh, which I forgot to tell you beforehand. Uh, my best friend says hello. She's a big Eddie fan. And so I remember. Who's your I best was, friend? My best friend, Julie. Um, Julie. Yes. Well, uh, she is wonderful. And so she is a big Eddie Koffoltz fan. And so um, we were, I was in the car driving to the chiropractor and I get this phone call. Have you listened to Eddie yet today? And I was like, no, I haven't. And she goes, he's talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. And I think what's also fair, Julie, is to say I'm talking at you, right? Yes. Because what I'm doing is still living in the safety of you're not there. Yes. I'm going to sit and just perch in my ivory tower and just wax poetically about things that I think Bridget should know about transitioning out of being a pastor and going to a new place. But I am happy she was happy. And I'm happy that I'm happy that I ran across the the email. Yes. And that's been a really interesting in the last couple of years. I have met so many people online or like because um, there is this weird moment of you don't know who's on the other like you know oh, people yeah. are listening to you but it's like they don't feel real and so i've made so many really good friends that have reached out um that it's amazing to me like even this past week i have two friends that i met because either they reached out after hearing me on a podcast or i saw that they were some at some conference that i also was attending and i was yeah. like hey do you want to get coffee while we're here and now they're like deep life on life friends and it's just the beauty of the internet and also the complexity and oddity of the whole thing i know um but how and, do you not make this digital thing analog? Because like I have been on podcasts that, I mean, podcasting by its nature is you and I are creating an MP3 and mm -hmm. uploading it to the cloud with no mechanism really that's meaningful for people to speak back. Yeah. And so like some people love the lack of echo chamber, but mm -hmm. for as much as I like being alone in a studio, it's still a weird thing to talk about something so personal, yep. right? Or anything. And then just be like, mm -hmm. turn it off. And so how do you make it conversational? I think that is the rare beauty of the internet is the fact that it's just like, oh, a thing that turned into me uploading data and then you responded with some data. And now there's yeah. like a human being that yeah. we're act that I actually know. And I actually know Julie now instead of just this like figure, right? Yeah. That's just like maybe we've chatted on live. But anyhow, yeah. So you had a question. I was interrupting it. Yeah, can we can we do a throwback to 2020 for a second or is it too soon? <laughs> oh, it's it's fine. It's still 2020 in some ways. It's all just one big blurry five years, but keep going. Let's do it. So again, like again, my experience of Eddie has been that you are someone who values and sees people. And so, yes, it's um, part of your participation in organizations um, that help people. Um, it's been in my encounter with you through a podcast newsletter response, um, but also throw back to 2020 when you were on a podcast with a friend that started out as something silly mm -hmm. of we're in pandemic and needs someone to process with. And so can we, I want to talk a little bit about kind of that process of something mm -hmm. that started um you know, again, I would love to kind of, I would love to kind of see behind the curtain from the outside. It just started as something simple of like just two friends ch chatting, hanging out, doing something fun. Um, yeah. I know, I know in my story that, um, that show is a big marker of, I, I kind of laugh and I'm like, someday I'm going to have my kids listen to the show just to feel what it felt like. And they're going to be like, mom, this is so stupid. Why are you making us do this? <laughs> <laughs> um, but that it was a time capsule moment. But in that, I guess my question specifically is, Yes, there were super silly moments and fun moments, but there also were serious moments. And you shared a little about just about your journey in mental health and um, physical health and counseling and that kind of stuff. Like, yeah, what was happening for you in that season of, hey, it might, as someone who sees people, it might be time for me to step back and say, I want to allow myself to be seen, too. Ooh, Bridget asking the question behind the question. So, yeah. Um, yeah, that, so the show that Bridget is talking about is, um, Annie and Eddie keep talking. Mm -hmm. And so Annie F Downs, who, if you're listening to this, you probably know who she is. Cause she is a very famous, very popular podcaster mm -hmm. who I have known for many years, um, and have been lucky enough to, and I, and I say this with like, not fame yeah. humility, but like actual, like, this is the reality. I have been lucky yeah. enough to ride her coattails for a number of years. And it has just been a joy. Yeah. Because she has fun coattails to ride and she has a great team and she's crazy generous with her platform. Mm -hmm. So, so why not? And she's, and, and I've acknowledged it and she's like, no, it's fun. <laughs> right. So yeah, Dr. Awesome. Phil and Oprah, that's how it works. Um, <laughs> great. Uh, so she and I started this show 
during the quarantine. And it was an interesting time because it, because here there's part of it I'll tell you, and then there's part of it I won't. So yeah. the part of it I'll tell you is that, I mean, it was a raw time in the world. Mm -hmm. When you think of what authenticity looks like in a moment, a lot of it is just like, what's, what is the temperature this morning? What, mm -hmm. what does the news say today? Yeah. Are we like, I, I can hear the show and just tell like, was this a day when everybody bought out all the toilet paper and we were washing our groceries and we were scared? Maybe we didn't talk about it, but there was like a general fear. Yeah. And so you kind of part of it are re responding to the moment, but then also part of it, and this is the part that I won't get like too deep into, mm -hmm. like, I can't listen to Annie and Eddie keep talking. I love that people listen to it. Yeah. And I love that it lives on and I would do more of it. And Annie and I will keep doing it. Like there will, mm -hmm. I don't, there's no announcement, but there's just no chance she and I are going to stop talking. I'm going to, yes, it'll be on her show. Team. We're going to find ways because we just like that time with each other. And we, mm -hmm. we like each other's rhythm. Like we're like a, we just like the rhythm of, of podcasting. But like also in my personal life at that time, it was a complete deconstruction of everything mm -hmm. from, and, and, a, and a lot of it I didn't share on the show, right? Yeah, so I'm staring down some, and I referenced this before in, in a newsletter, but like some real addiction stuff mm -hmm. that I'm not about to talk about on the show, but yeah. was like, it was a reckoning. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, like, I know the show that was the day of the reckoning. Yep. So like, I remember a show where before it, I had a full panic attack. First one I've ever had in my life mm -hmm. because I'm walking out of a place of addiction and I'm, mm -hmm. I just had a full panic attack. Yep. Um, and which I've never had. So I don't even know what's going on. Heads down on the mm -hmm. desk. I am just like crying and not okay. Mm -hmm. But then it's like 1030 record Annie F downs. How you doing buddy? Like, right. Like you just put on yeah. the, so it was a weird time for me because both of it, it was both completely authentic, but it's also like podcast authentic. Mm -hmm. Like we can know Bridget, but like. Go, yeah. The, go. The, the phrase that I use that I think is really helpful in setting boundaries of what is publicly appropriate and what needs to stay in safe community is I use the phrase high privacy, no secrets, um, which keeps uh, every, which honors everybody. So high privacy yeah. is no, I'm not telling everyone. Um, the in and outs of what's currently happening in my life. First of all, because my brain can't handle that and I want to honor my own story, but also mm -hmm. no secrets. So there are people in my life that do get to know the unfiltered version. So oh, yeah. I, I think that that is a really great way of processing that season. And that's the perfect way to put it. And so that was a kind of wild season of, I don't know if this is what you're asking, but that was no, sort great. of the like, it was all authentic yep. and it was all very real, but it was also like, it was a, it was a breath of fresh air in my day because even though COVID was a beast, I mean, horrible. And it was like scary and the kids are being homeschooled and Brienne is, Brienne, my wife is in school. And now like we moved there because she wanted to be a student in person and it was so fun. And now she's home too. And it's like, everything's falling apart. All of a sudden there's like a podcast that now more people than have ever listened to anything I've ever done or will ever do are listening. Oh, my phone's ringing. How <laughs> terrible is that? Great. I'm sorry. And you know where the phone call was from? Idaho. Wow. What are the, I don't know anybody in Idaho. There's no way someone didn't call to just sell me something. So I'm so sorry that <laughs> happened in your That's podcast, great. Bridget. Um, so I, I'm going on too long about this, but but it was, it was, Annie and Eddie was like a respite in the day mm -hmm. where it was just such a joy to talk about some of the silly stuff because there was a, like a lot of not silly happening. And yes. in that, like back full circle, that was what was helpful for I feel like for me in the show and a lot of the echo that I've heard back is that we were somehow like flying authentically into the mundane and silly. We were, we were like Absolutely. touching it seven minutes of serious. Like we would touch it, but then also it was like, I'm going to spend my whole day worrying. I'm going to spend my whole day figuring out how to get groceries. I'm going to spend my whole day banging pots and pans for nurses. Yep. Right. Like this is weird. Mm -hmm. Let's have it. Yeah. Let's, let's kind of fly above that narrative. Yeah. That's I great. didn't answer your question. Do you want to? Do you want me to answer your question? I'm sorry. I don't even know. It was, no. but that was that's the behind the scenes. Well, no, but I think I, my question was like, there was a lot of bravery involved in you allowing yourself to be seen, and I like I think oh, yeah. that there's even the transition into um, doing the best we can. You know, your podcast and newsletter now. Um, like, I guess that's kind of my transition question is. I'm curious just for, from you, like what has been your experience, but also like, what have you learned along the way? Mm -hmm. um, I think that we all experience that of there's, there's something inside of me 
that matters that needs to come out. And at the same breath, I'm terrified that when I hit uh, publish or whatever it is, like what happens if this fails and falls apart? What happens if people don't like it? Like um, kind of what has been just your normal human process in in kind of transitioning um, into yeah. sh sharing, not not that I don't want to say that Annie and Eddie wasn't authentic. It was very authentic, mm -hmm. but now going more into like honing into your voice. Yeah. Um, what has that looked like? Yeah. Doing the best we can. And I'm not, I don't care if you pitch the show, but I can't not talk about it because it's oh, so connected to it, show. but you don't yeah. really need to, but like took me like three months from when it was named to starting it but it probably took me 15 years to get mm -hmm. there. Um, because for me, the fundamental question was like, why share this? Mm -hmm. Like, what would someone care that I am sharing that I have struggled my whole life and have just basically realized that I'm dyslexic? Like, who cares? Like, who mm -hmm. cares really? I mean, I know people care about yeah. me, but like, but like, what does it matter? And mm -hmm. I still struggle like I still don't actually have an answer for that yeah and it was actually like I had to come to the point where it's like the these words and this method of writing and podcasting is like keeps bubbling out of me yep and I'd like to just see this through I'd like mm -hmm. to just see what it means um because my friend Richard Lee who is certainly listening to this um uh, calls Hi, me he yeah, he says it's he says that he says that he can tell, I'm sorry to speak in first person, but he says, I can tell when you're Eddie playing the part of Eddie. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's like the, yes, you're getting the, you're getting a piece that through being on a lot of podcasting has been able to render in real time, a safe version of myself mm -hmm. that isn't going to put other people at risk, share other people's stories, mm -hmm. expose my family to things they don't want to talk yep. about. Even just, and it's not like there's like big dark secrets, but just embarrass anybody. Yeah. Or just like a story that happened with a kid yesterday i'm like they don't they didn't sign up for a podcast they don't want to be fodder for all this so how do i render in real time something that's authentic yep. without jeopardizing either my own mental health or just the care of people around me mm -hmm. doing the best we can was hard because it was like all right i'm gonna go deeper into this I still don't talk about everything i still yep. don't right but but i still it's there was a massive fight with and still is like with insecurity, like mm -hmm. who cares? Mm -hmm. Like, what does this matter? Like write great fiction, do something else, put your effort towards something. Like, what does it matter mm -hmm. that you just spent, you know, all this time talking about just boohoo on about your childhood? Mm -hmm. I still don't really have a, I, I still don't really have a reason. I actually don't have an answer for that outside of the fact that it was just like, keep going. So the process to your question was Annie and Eddie was hard. Mm -hmm. Er, but it was still, I still had the Annie safety net where when I could tell I was getting into territory, like this is the actual shorthand that people don't pick up on. Like she just feels it and grabs it and goes. Yep. Doing the best we can is a whole different beast. And I'm still not quite sure why I'm doing it. <laughs> yeah. There's been this nagging um, thought in my head the last week. I'm So I'm not a fiction reader. Mm -hmm. um, it's much like the way I eat watermelon, which is one piece a year. I'm not. I don't understand what, what is uh, in my brain that does that, but it's like, okay, I've had one bite of watermelon at the 4th of July or whatever it is. And I'm yeah, good for the year. Did. Watermelon flavor, by the way, great. is different. Watermelon itself, whole different deal. Like grape flavor. Yep. It doesn't taste like a grape, but I understand the, I, I think I like chemical water, watermelon more than I like the actual <laughs> <Absolutely>. like fruit. <laughs> watermelon yes, Jolly Rancher all day long. That's so great. Um, anyway, so I read like one fiction book a year. And so yeah. I'm, re I'm reading this book um, right now. I'm totally blanking on the name. It's a Charles Martin book and really just appreciates the way that he writes. And so in the story, he's um, coaching someone who has written down their story for the first time. And uh, she says the character says something along the lines of like, well, like, why am I going to write a book? Like, no one's going to read it. No one's going to list like it. It's not going to sell anything. And he's like, we don't write books so that people read them, we write them because we can't not. Yeah. And so, yeah, yeah there is that, that space of like, I mean, that's one of the things that I hope from our conversation today is people just feel seen in that space of 
it's really okay if, if I mean, I've had dreams that have totally, <laughs> I've tried it and it's not worked, um, mm. but I'm still grateful like for that moment. And I even use the language of self-trust. Like when we show up to the places in our own life where we go, even if this doesn't work, even if no one else likes it, agrees with it, thinks it's cool, like I still needed to know that I would show up for me. I mean, I think it is great that so many people are impacted um, when we step out in bravery that we won't even know all the stories, which I think is mind blowing to me of yeah, all the things we don't know that are happening behind the scenes in people's lives. Yeah. And that's a interesting way of putting it. Cause I do think part of the early marketing of doing the best we can, and there's never been a marketing plan. It's just doing the best I can, uh, but was definitely talking about like, I have been impacted by other people's stories that I don't know. Mm -hmm. Like I read a bunch of memoirs like, yeah. and, and why do I care at all about the life of Dave Grohl? Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know, but his, mm -hmm. his memoir was really beautiful and really yeah. thoughtful. Like, why do I, and, and so there's something about like, it's, it's not something about it. it's what you're basing your, a lot of your work on. Right. But mm -hmm. there is something about that. Like why, mm -hmm. I don't know why, but I know that I can answer the why towards other people. And I think maybe my own barrier of myself will never let me get to the point where I feel like, um, like not uncomfortable. The fact that you said Julia is an Eddie fan. Like that is a very, I'm like, you, you got to get to know me. Like it mm -hmm. is, you know, it is, there's nothing fan worthy. Mm. Um, but that's not, hum that's not humility. That's not even feign humility. That's no, just uncomfortable you. with the entire yeah. concept and the entire concept of, creating something and just trying to build, I'm just uncomfortable with the whole thing. Yeah. But at the same time, I showed up on a podcast at relevant, mm -hmm. uh, years Throwback. ago, yeah. way back. Right. And was on that. And then I get to write Annie's coattails. I'm on this. And you're like, there are some people that are going to pay attention. Mm -hmm. Like, what are you going to throw out there? And I think some of it's like, we can throw out entertainment, but I also think it's like, I'm not going to do this forever. Mm -hmm. so, so maybe just sharing something that is slightly helpful to, th that I've learned might be helpful to someone else. Mm -hmm. That's as far as I've ever gotten with it. That's yeah. as far as I've been able to take it. But your quote is right. <laughs> and I think, um, I mean, people who show up authentically are people that are trustworthy. Again, like this is our first real conversation, but just even in the way that you've shown up, like it's created safety to say, Hey, this is someone that I want to navigate this conversation with. Hmm. Um, because we don't want someone who's perfect. First of all, perfect doesn't exist. And so we want people who are being brave to witness their own story. And I think there's that part of that. That's something like I'm really passionate about is like, what does it look like to create words that bear witness to someone's story? And it might not be the oh. same story as mine, but I think again, like that, I think that's something that's happening inside of our being when we're like, there's something about this person, this story, this situation that lights something up in me. And sometimes it's just an inspiration thing, but also I think sometimes it actually provides language. Again, it's that whole trauma thing that we started the conversation out with. Like when we find something in someone else's story that bears witness to something that we've never had words for, it heals us in a yeah. deep level. I was close to getting Glennon Doyle, a quote, a quote from Glennon Doyle, her mm -hmm. book Untamed, tattooed yeah. on me Yeah. In during Annie and Eddie Keep Talking mm -hmm. because a person who I almost couldn't have less in common with. Yep. Just, I mean, I needed her and I needed yep. Untamed in that moment, like more than I've ever needed a book. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if I went back and read it now, it'd be the same. And I know that it's super popular for a reason because everybody loves her. Mm -hmm. But I see what you're saying. Like she yeah. and I couldn't have less in common, but that book and her words and the, like the details of some of the details of her story mm -hmm. were like a hundred percent, like keys to a lock that, that like a special key to a special lock that only yep. she and I had and that she has with a lot of people. But yeah, I love I that. Like, um, can we talk about friendships for a second? Because it's been mm -hmm. really cool in our conversation. Um, Richard and Julie, shout out to the people, Hello. right? Um, I know in my life, like that is a friendship where she has seen every version of Bridget and is the person that when I'm on a stage goes yeah. halfway through that sermon, you shut off what happened. Yeah. Like you stopped 
being present to what was happening and what was happening. And so I'd be like, oh yeah, I felt this or this memory popped up to me or I felt this insecurity or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I think there's this weird, um, not weird. I just think it's part of the process that I want to kind of demystify for people is whatever it is inside of you. If I want to go share something beautiful with the world, or I don't even know if it's beautiful. I just, I want to share it and people are responding or just kind of this human experience of people are impacted by me and I'm learning just to stay present and say thank you when everything inside of me wants to go, oh, I'm really not that. I'm really not that awesome. Or, you know, everybody shares that experience. Um, what has friendship meant to you in this journey of sharing your story more publicly um, meant just kind of as like a, yeah, what has friendship meant to you in that journey? Oh, I mean, it's the whole thing. I, I It's... So by the time something shows up on a newsletter or on Annie and I to keep talking, the people that are like my green light people, the people mm -hmm. that like know me deeply, like that I don't have to, I put no front up around like, like Richard, like there's no, mm -hmm. there's nothing. There's no, because I trust him fully. Yep. So details of the most intimate details of my life about my mm -hmm. children and my marriage and things that I would never like yep. deep in there right deep in there, right? Like there's a couple of people like that and in which I would count those people. I would say there's under 10 people yep. that are like super green light, mm -hmm. just those folks. The, their effect on me is both like just sustaining and they make me really happy. And they're what's, I mean, my best friend happens to be Brienne to whom I am wed. Mm -hmm. And so like part of it is just like joy in my life. Like I, she's coming home at four o'clock. I can't wait to hang out today. Like, yeah, I love that. Because I don't, I don't self-generate a lot of joy. And so I don't like, I'm not like needy for it, but like, it's like, I just, I don't know. We're going to Pittsburgh this weekend and we're seeing a bunch of random stuff. We're going to the anthropology outlet and all of these random things that will be just like, this will be a fun, memorable weekend that we'll have yeah. pictures of. This weekend would have absolutely not existed had it not been for the fact that Brian just runs at that speed. So there's that kind of joy. Mm -hmm. But the other thing too is like, my whole life gets filtered through a very, very slow sand filter with all of these people. Mm -hmm. And like, they know all of it and the mm -hmm. good and the bad and the ugly and the corrective and, and, and along the way, like help and attach and reform and challenge me and all of this stuff. Like, mm -hmm. and by the time it's filtered out at the bottom, of which it takes years sometimes. Sometimes it's real time, but usually it takes like a long time. Once it's filtered through those relationships, then I feel like, okay, well, this is something at least I can put in the hopper for considering yeah. for like newsletter, mm -hmm. podcasty kind of stuff. That's great. I could, it is impossible. I, I do, I do not have enough of a, of a self governing <laughs> mechanism. Cause I would just, I would be wide open. If it was just solely me in this world, I would share yeah. everything always real time, mm -hmm. but I, I shouldn't, I, I shouldn't, it would be dangerous and it would be ego building. Cause I know I could yeah. build a brand a lot faster if I was more honest in real time. Wow. That's good. That's so good. Well, I wish we could talk forever, but we have a few moments left in our podcast. And so I want to make sure that people can get connected to you um, and your newsletter and doing the best we can. So can you just kind of share, how can people get connected to you and what can they expect? Because I, I, like I said, I value what you're creating and putting in the world. And I want to make sure that my listeners have access to that. Bridget, that's very sweet. Okay. Because you asked. Um, so it's a newsletter. I started as a newsletter and then it becomes a podcast. So you can go to my website, eddiecoffolds.com. It's impossible to spell. You're going to have to really want it. Yep. I'll um, put it in the show notes. <laughs> right, go to the show notes and uh, subscribe to the newsletter or the podcast or both. Um, they both kind of have their own unique content. I send out something every Thursday, uh, barring a few breaks in a year. Um, and, and that's it. And I, I really branding wise, marketing wise, I don't know what to tell you is coming. We just did mm -hmm. four weeks on financial literacy. Yep. It was on my mind. I've been thinking about it. I can tell you that next week is going to be a super deep, uh, dive advice column where someone sent me a question and I could not get it out of my head. And it's the opposite thing. So I don't know what to tell you it is. And I don't know what to tell you <laughs> why you would follow a person that you don't know. But yeah. I send it to Julie and that's good enough. Yes. So like, what else could we want? But really more than anything, like if you're listening to this and you've come over from 
doing the best we can to listen to like Bridget's show, subscribe to this show because the world actually needs creators that are being paid attention to and that are thoughtful. And what people don't know behind the scenes is that this was like a curated show. It was easy to set up. It was like, there is a junk ton of work that goes into making what sounds like a simple MP3 that you just downloaded. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, even like, look at her backdrop first mine. If you're watching this, I mean, look at it. Friendship. It's just like, <laughs> it's just my kitchen is behind us, right? <laughs> it's just fantastic. I'm sitting in a den. The cat has been over there the whole time, but like follow the creators and follow the voices that are doing Thank this you. kind of work. So sure. Follow me. Great. But really make sure you subscribe to this because mm-hmm. this is where this is like the safe place to have the through line of these kinds of conversations. Um, and it has a way more defined uh, brand and identity than anything that I will ever send you. Mm. Well, I just appreciate our conversation today. Thanks for your authenticity and learning together and just grateful for you in this conversation. I love it. And sorry I had to end early. I got to go pick up the kids from VBS and they want me to come watch their little show. There's a little show that they do on the last day. Oh, gosh, I love it so much. Okay. But can I be honest (laughs) with you? Like as a parent, and and the kids are older. They're like going into like fifth and sixth grade. I've seen yeah. about a hundred of these shows. Like I get yeah. it. They're all in a line. I don't even think the kids like doing it that much. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, we'll do it. But we are, I know that you are just, you're just like young and bright eyed, but I'm telling you, I am a little bit like, do I really have to stop my day? I mean, I go? have, I have set through some painful, um, child, uh, art shows and Jeez. concerts because I love oh. friends that have kiddos. And so right. I, I, I do understand the experience, but Anyway, Elementary but, school band is the soundtrack to health. No, anyhow, you're trying to close <laughs> your show. Please keep going. Anyhow, go for it. <laughs> Friends, thank you so much for joining this conversation. And I will see you next time on the Recover Your Life podcast.